you know, I've always had the firm belief that quarterbacks more times than not get way too much credit when their team has success and they get way too much blame when their team struggles. We often at times fail to give quarterbacks the right amount of credit and the right amount of blame when things go great and when things go wrong. And you know, there are the media uh, darlings out there, you know, the guys that the media always wants to protect, you know, no matter what that player does, you know, if they spit on their mom's shoes, you know, they'll blame the wind on it. They'll say, oh, this quarterback can do no wrong. The, you know, quarterbacks that people have love affairs for, you know, the quarterbacks that have overachieved and had great success throughout their career, well respected around most NFL locker rooms, you know, the Drew Breeses of the world, you know, anytime you say anything bad about Drew Brees, it, you're you're labeled as a hater of Drew Brees, you know. Oh, you're a Drew Brees hater. You hate Drew Brees. No, I'm just pointing out the fact that he's never been the best quarterback in the NFL. He's never won a league MVP. Drew Brees, throughout his 20-year career, has missed the playoffs nine times and has had more below 500 seasons than you realize. However, that's not the point. I want to talk about Russell Wilson, okay? Because over the last four to five seasons, post-Legion of Boom, you know, Russell Wilson early in his career, you know, didn't quite get enough credit for being a very good quarterback. You know, a lot of people said that he was getting carried by a very good defense and a very good running game led by Marshawn Lynch, when in reality, Russell Wilson was that dude pretty early on in his career. He was very clutch, making game-winning plays. You know, he definitely was one of the people that you know, really made the Seahawks go. You know, if Russell Wilson didn't make the big boy throws, if he wasn't so clutch on third down, Seattle wouldn't have got would not have gotten the two straight Super Bowls and they would not have won a Super Bowl back in twenty thirteen, okay, over Peyton Manning and the Broncos. But over the past four to five seasons, post Legion of Boom, after that Legion of Boom defense has left, I think Russell Wilson has gotten way too much credit for Seattle's success, I think Russell Wilson has not gotten enough blame for when Seattle has struggled, okay? Because over the past four weeks, Seattle has lost three games. And Russell Wilson, in the in three of those losses, has not played his best football. He's not been very good. And did you know that Russell Wilson right now is second in the NFL in turnovers? He's tied with Daniel Jones right now. Only Carson Wentz up to this point heading into week 11 of the 2020 NFL season has more turnovers than Russell Wilson. Could you imagine the blowback that Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes or Deshaun Watson or Dak Prescott would be getting if they were second in the NFL in turnovers? and we're already halfway through the NFL season, do you know how much pushback those guys will be getting? Heck, Tom Brady. People would be saying, man, Tom Brady needs to retire. Meanwhile, Russell Wilson, he's second in the NFL in turnovers, and you think Russell Wilson is still the leading NFL MVP candidate. In fact, I think the narrative is so you know set in stone that Russell Wilson has, has not gotten a single NFL MVP vote throughout his career, which is pretty asinine to me. The fact that Russell Wilson has never gotten a single MVP vote is pretty mind-boggling to me. But the media put, put out a narrative in the offseason that said, oh, let Russ cook, let Russell Wilson run the offense. He'll put up MVP numbers. And while Russell Wilson does lead the league in touchdowns as we speak today, He's also among the league leaders in turnovers, okay? And now everyone is saying, well, the Seattle Seahawks need to run the football better. But when Pete Carroll was running the football last year and having a balanced attack and Russell Wilson didn't have the statistics that Lamar Jackson had, they complained and they said, well, despite the numbers, Russell Wilson is valuable. Russell Wilson deserves NFL MVP over Lamar Jackson. When in reality, Lamar Jackson was by far the NFL MVP last year, and anyone that told you otherwise just did not watch did not watch enough Lamar Jackson games last year, and they're just flat out wrong. I'm sorry if that hurt some people. I'm sorry if it hurt Seahawks Nation, but let's just talk about the last couple of games because 
If you look at how Seattle's lost and you read these headlines, you read what the pressers are saying, all you'll hear is, oh, poor is me, poor is me, Russell Wilson, poor Russell Wilson, his defense is atrocious, his defense sucks, the offensive line is so bad, Pete Carroll's no longer lead head coach, Seattle's Russell Wilson or bust, when Russell Wilson plays great, they even lose those games, R Russell Wilson has no help when they fail to realize that DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett are two of the best wide receivers in all of football. They also failed to realize that Russell Wilson has played poorly in his team's three losses this season. Let's evaluate things. Seattle the last couple of weeks has gotten pushed around by Buffalo, pushed around by the Rams, and they, and they lost a close game to the Arizona Cardinals. Now, by the way, I do think Seattle has a chance to beat Arizona this week as Arizona is coming off of an emotional win versus Buffalo and Seattle, they're home. They need to win this game. They will win this game more than likely. And for what it's worth, Russell Wilson has never had a three-game losing streak throughout his career. Russell Wilson's a great quarterback. I'm not trying to bash the guy. He's at worst the top five quarterback right now. I say he's top three at his position. Patrick Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson. Those are your top three quarterbacks in the NFL in no particular order. But let's look at the three losses that Seattle has suffered this season. They're 6-3 and three, heading into Week 11. In the three losses that Seattle has suffered this year, Russell Wilson in those three losses has 10 turnovers. That's not good. That's not on the offensive line. That's not on Pete Carroll. That's not on the lack of a running game. Russell Wilson has been holding on to the football way too long. He's been making very poor decisions. He's thrown some very ugly, just flat-out bad interceptions, and he has been costing the Seattle Seahawks football games because he's been hurting the Seattle Seahawks with his turnovers. Russell Wilson, throughout the you know first half of the season, for the most part, he's been phenomenal. I expect Russell Wilson to cut down on the turnovers over the next couple of weeks. I expect Seattle to win anywhere from 10 to 12 games, and they'll be in the playoffs. But people, we have to be fair when evaluating these quarterbacks, especially one of Russell Wilson's caliber. And can I not point out the fact that no one talks about the fact that Russell Wilson choked, just flat out choked, in Super Bowl Forty Nine? All we hear about is how great of a play Malcolm Butler made on the football in Super Bowl Forty Nine to win the New England Patriots that game. But I guarantee you that if Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady, or Ben Roethlisberger, or Lamar Jackson, if they threw that interception to Sean Watson too, Dak Prescott especially, you know, Carson Wentz especially, because those guys are, are heavily criticized. If one of the quarterbacks that I mentioned threw the interception that Russell Wilson threw on the goal line versus the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl, they will be getting crushed. They be getting crucified. All I heard about after that Super Bowl loss was Pete Carroll stinks. How can you call that passing play, Pete Carroll? You stink. You should be fired. And look, I'm not trying to defend Pete Carroll in this situation because it was a terrible call. He should have ran the football with Marshawn Lynch on the one yard line. But let's not absolve the quarterback that turned the football over and lost Seattle the football game. That would be Russell Wilson. Let's also take into account the fact that Russell Wilson, in his last seven playoff games, he's got a below 500 record. He's got three wins and four losses in his last seven playoff games. He's gotten blown out by Matt Ryan. He's gotten outplayed by Cam Newton. He's gotten outplayed by Aaron Rodgers. And he's also got a loss mixed in there to Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys, who are not a very good football team that season. Also, you have to look at some of the wins that he's gotten. Not a whole lot of impressive wins. He's beaten Teddy Bridgewater by one point in a game they should have lost because Minnesota's field goal kicker missed the game-winning field goal, you know, in Minnesota. So he should have lost that game, but he won that game. If you want a cookie, that's fine. Also, he beat the, the mighty bad boy Detroit Lions, who were not a very good football team. They were lucky to make the playoffs. But hey, Russell Wilson, if you want a cookie for that, that's fine. You beat a Lions team that wasn't very good. And also, last year... You beat Josh McCown and the Philadelphia Eagles. Let's not forget in that game versus Philadelphia, the game that Russell Wilson won by a whopping eight points. In that eight-point victory, Carson Wentz 
the starting quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles, did not even last two quarters in that game. Josh McCown had to come in and be the be the quarterback for Philadelphia. And in that game, he tore his hamstring. And Philadelphia only lost by eight points. Those are not a whole lot of impressive playoff victories from Russell Wilson over the last four seasons. And listen, we tend to protect the players that we love, like Drew Brees and Russell Wilson, you know, who overachieve, you know, because Russell Wilson, he was he was a second round pick. He's a short guy, barely five foot eleven. He's overachieved. He's a guy you root for. He's a great leader, and that's all cool and dandy. I'm all for you guys praising Russell Wilson. I'm all for you guys acknowledging that he's had a great season. That he's leading the league in touchdowns right now. But we also have to be fair and criticize Russell Wilson when he deserves the criticism. Yes, people. It is okay to criticize Russell Wilson when need be. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Alert Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. This podcast is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Alert Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day, and I'm out.